Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metal Nation, joined today by Ryan Van Puderoy of Immonolith. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing awesome, and I gotta say, you probably pronounce my name better than anyone who's done an interview with me. That's amazing, Mac. <laughs> it, it's not an easy one, is it? He right? <laughs> said it really well. I'm impressed, bro. I'm impressed. So, first off, congratulations. I mean, six spot, I think, three weeks in a row now on the NACC Top 30 charts for Hollow. Congrats on that, man. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we're uh, we're pleasantly surprised. It's been a, a really good campaign for just, you know, one song, right? It's not an album yet. So, uh yeah, we're really happy, man. We're really stoked, and uh, thanks to, to people like yourselves, the radio stations, and all the people out there supporting us. Absolutely. It's a great song, and, and you were just saying it. It's like you look at the rest of the list of the people that are on there, and you're the only one that's a single. Everybody else has the full album, so you're rocking it with one song. That's great. <laughs> that is a great thing, right? And, um, you know, we're, we're just honored to be on there, and uh, we're just busting our, our butts to, to get this album out in uh, midsummer. Awesome. So before we get into it, I was just sitting here thinking while I was waiting for you to call. It's Valentine's Day today. Are there any actual metal Valentine's songs? Do we even do Valentine's in heavy metal? You know what? That's a great question, man. Let's let's think about it. You know what? I bet you since I play with Devin Towns and I'm I'm almost positive he's he's got to have ten of them. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> He, he writes he writes anything that you want so you know if you think about it if you look deep enough in Deb's catalog I'm pretty sure you'll find uh, one or two so let's talk at Monolith how did all of this come together you and Beef started building this about a year ago correct actually we started building this in uh, 2015 and we actually put the band together in 2018 so how how it came to be was uh, we're on tour with Devin all the time, uh, you know, the past 10 years with the Devin Townsend Project. And in between tours, uh, starting 2015, we decided to start writing together just because we had a lot of similar influences and uh, we just wrote well together. And the thing about playing in a band with Devin Townsend is you never know when he's gonna pull the plug on something, right? Like he did it with Devin Townsend Band, did it with Strappy Young Lad, and uh, you know, we, we got the vibe that it was it was coming that time. You just don't know when it's going to happen. So we started writing music just in case that did happen. Come uh, January 2018, we get the call from Dev that yep, D DTP is over, man. That's when Brian and I said, you know what? We got 15 songs now that we really enjoy playing, and uh, we think they're great tunes. Let's uh, let's put a band together. So. We were jamming with Byron Stroud at the time. We showed him the material. He loved it, and uh, he's our bass player. And then uh, we got John Howard from Threat Signal on vocals and Kai Hoopinen, who played uh, with Methods of Mayhem on guitar. And so, so it all came together. It's a pretty stacked lineup. And yeah, you're right, Devin's sort of a mercurial genius there. <laughs> yeah, you know, you just, you don't know. It's like, I always say, you know, it's Devin's like the, the Forrest Gump of metal. You just don't know what you're going to get. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, the thing is, I mean that, I, I love the guy, he's a brother to me, right? You know, and uh, I mean that in a, in a good way. It's just like the guy's so diverse, you, you just don't know what you're going to get. But within the same breath, you don't know how he's going to handle his career either, right? So we knew that going in, and I'm, I'm grateful that Brian and I started writing when we did. What you guys are doing, very different from what you did with Dev, because Dev did the writing for, for his stuff. What did you want to do musically and creatively with this band that you have not been able to do in your previous projects? You, you know what the biggest thing was, is write what we loved. This, it wasn't like, we're going to be a metal band, or we're going to be you know a rock band or a hard rock band. We just wrote songs. We're like, ah, oh, that's a cool riff, man. And it's like, yeah, it's more like a rock song. Well, who cares? Let's write it. You know, so... That's what we did with the monolith. But, you know, I think a lot of people were expecting this to almost be influenced or a continuation of the various bands that all the members played in, but it's not. You know, what it is is a bunch of music that we truly enjoy playing and enjoy writing. So, you know, you're going to get the heavy stuff. For sure you're going to get that. To be honest, you're not going to really get any progressive prog stuff on this album. But you're also going to get rock stuff and stuff that's a little more uh, catchy and commercial, I guess you could say. So it, it's a pretty diverse album that we've worked on. 
And, you know, we just don't want to be a one-trick pony with this. Right. And you just sort of alluded to this. You guys released the first single, Hollow, which we mentioned doing very well, which gives us a taste of the more accessible, catchy side of your music. But what can listeners expect from the overall Amonolith sound? That's exactly it. You know, just what I, I pretty much said there is there's a heavier side for sure. You know, just crushing metal, cool riffs, you know, pretty crushing vocals. You know, but then we'll flip to the commercial side, I guess you could say, the more accessible side. And then we have stuff that's kind of combined between the two, you know, where it's still punishing and, and, you know, metal in a way, but there's still, like, this overall groove and catchiness to the project. That's why I think a, a common theme throughout is there's always something you can move to in this music. It doesn't matter if we're crushing it or, or something that's a little more catchy. There's always a, a consistent groove and hooks. And hooks don't always mean catchy. <laughs> hooks can be super heavy as well, as we know. You know, it's like one of my favorite bands of all time was Pantera. And, you know, they could crush it at any given moment. But one thing that Diamond Mitty always put out were consistent hooks. You know, whether it's Walk or Mouth for War or Becoming, you know, all those songs are killer among many others. But that was always a consistent thing to the records. And I think we have the same type of thing. You, we were talking a little bit a moment ago about, because uh, you guys, you and Brian had basically 15 songs sort of put together, but how does that writing process sort of work in this context? Because the other guys came on a little bit later. It started with you and Brian, but with Byron, John, and Kai in the band, how has that altered? Or did they get in much on the songwriting or the creation process of any of this? Well, yes, they did. And, and like the, the songs were pretty much written by Brian and I. The guys love the songs. We brought in a producer who, who helped us tweak them. But, you know, where the guys really came into play was, like, some of the songwriting, some of the songs changed. A couple of riffs got in there. For example, John, our singer, he, he lent a riff to this song we have called We Never Forget that'll be on the album. It's an amazing song. And, and a lot of the cooler riffs on that were um, presented by John. But then there's a lot of overdub stuff, like, that really kind of ups the sound of the band right and that's where everyone else kind of contributed and, and kicked in because everyone does the songs that brian and i wrote and they're like let's use this as a basis for what a monolith is going to sound like you know when it comes to a second record yeah you know that's going to be more of a scenario where we're all in the jam space and we're writing together as a band but for now to get this thing going and because it was a vision that brian and i had and from there, we kind of sought out everyone that we got in the band. We're just going to use those songs as the basis for what a monolith is. Nice. And we'll jump ahead to a question I was going to ask you about, because you already alluded to this. You have your brother Jay and then Brian Howes producing the album. Beyond the familial connection, why did you choose them, and what do they sort of bring to the monolith sound? You know what? We wanted to step out of the norm. We didn't want to get a metal producer. Let's put it that way. You know, because we weren't just metal. And, and we thought, well, if we work with these guys, let's see what they can bring. You know, let's see how they can make the song interesting. And that's the thing. It's like, I know they're diverse people, right? So when we brought in Hollow to them, surprisingly, they, they made it heavier than what we had. And, um, you know, a lot of people think when you go to work with the guys who produce Nickelback or Airborne or Hinder or something like that, you know, they're, you think they're going to really pop it up or, or whatever. But they, they did the opposite. They do what's right for the music. So they actually slowed the tempo down of the song a bit. They introduced some really weird guitar overdubs and, uh, you know, really got John to, to hit up the heavier vocals in the song. And that's exactly what we were looking for. So, you know, Brian and Jay, they did hollow, but for that, the rest of the album is actually just going to be Jay producing, mixing, and engineering the record. We just brought Brian in on the one song because uh, he has great ideas. He's a great melody maker, and he helped uh, shape our melodies and stuff and, and, and uh, contributed to that. So it was a great experience, and we're really looking forward to, to getting this record done with uh, Jay, which we're going to start March 6th. We're going to finish the rest of the record. How many of the songs so far have sort of, because you, you guys had them pre-written, ready to go, but how many of them, once you got in the studio, sort of took on a life of their own and started altering as you were in the studio? That's a great question, because you know what? All of them 
started doing that, but not just because of the studio, but just because of how the band was put together. Like, like we had mentioned earlier in this interview, a ton, all the material was pretty much written, you know, and then you bring in all these guys and then they start adding their ideas, which was kind of phase one, you know, like overdub ideas and little changes here and there. And then you bring in the producer, Jay, and he just started giving his input and production ideas on it. Hey, you know, uh, maybe cut this pre-chorus in half or, you know, make that a double chorus at the end or, or whatever, you know. And that's kind of how this all morphed into what it is now. So it was definitely a team effort, but it wasn't the usual way that things would go, you know, just because of how the, the band came to be. But, you know, the one thing I want to say for sure is that this is a band. You know, it's, it's not about Brian and I going to write the next record after this one's done. It's not like that at all. That's just how it started. You know, that's how we got this sound. But we definitely look forward to when a second record comes out that uh, everyone's in a jam space together throwing in all the ideas and we just uh, evolve as a sound from this uh, first record. Absolutely. With the kind of talent you got in the band, how could you not want something like that? Now, before we get out of here, we have to ask the Wikipedia question, first time talking, brand new band. Is there an origin story for the band name or did it just sound cool? You know what? It's a bit of the two, man. So we had a list of names that we were just going through and stuff. And one of the names that came up was Monolith, just the word Monolith. And I'm like, well, that's been used as a band name that's been used for several album names, but we love the sound of it. We love the meaning behind it. It's kind of metal. It's kind of heavy, you know, and, but we couldn't use it. So we just started thinking of other ideas and I, w- I was actually in the shower, <laughs> right? And I was sitting there and I was thinking, well, what if we throw an eye in front of him and just call it a monolith? And so I brought it up to the guys and they're like, what's it mean? It means nothing. <laughs> you know, it's, it sounds cool. And they're like, that's awesome. All right, let's, let's go with the monolith, right? So that's how that name came to be, man. It's, it's just, you know, being creative with it. And uh, it stuck. And then, ironically enough, because you just mentioned this, a lot of albums named Monolith, Byron's old band just announced their new album is going to be called Monolith. I'm like, what? what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's pretty funny, man, because, you know, I'm good friends with Burton and, and Dino. And uh, that came out, and it's like, whatever, man. It's, it's not a monolith. Maybe, you know, if it was called a monolith, that would be weird, you know. But, yeah, it's called monolith, and I, I don't know the story behind it. I haven't talked to Burton about it. It's funny, though, because uh, Deedle called me, and uh, he's like, hey, man, you have time to chat? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I had, I had no idea Burton was going to call the album that. And, you know, he's like, I had no idea he did the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of like, hey, man, neither did we, right? And, uh, you know, he already mentioned that, I guess, online, Dino. And, uh, you know, it's been reported. But whatever, man, it's it's like, I, I don't think it's it's anything bad whatsoever. If anything, it brings attention to us. And, you know, more press for us. We're a brand new band. We don't mind it at all. Absolutely. So, and you said you sort of came up with the band name while you were in the shower. And I was going to ask you, as one of our little fun ones on the way out, where's sort of the strangest place you've been struck for inspiration for like music and songs? You know what, man? The shower is my place, dude. I'm telling you. It's like I've come up with vocal melodies, I've come up with drum parts, uh, guitar riffs. Man, I came up with a band name in the shower. It's just, what do you do in the shower? You're sitting there, you're washing your body, man. You know, it's like, for, for me, that's that's a place, you know, for five minutes there where I get away. And uh, sometimes that five-minute shower turns into a 15-minute one because I'm on a roll. You know, it's like, even when I came up with uh, the name of Monolith, that was like a 10-minute shower because it just started messing with the words and putting different words or letters in front of it, and that's how it came to be. So, yeah, I guess that's it, man. It's like I should shower more, even though I shower already once twice a day. <laughs> I, I'm completely with you. I'm the same way. I've written entire songs in my head in the shower. Then, of course, I get out, get on with my life, and then I'm like, shit, what was that song I spent 20 minutes in the shower thinking about? <laughs> exactly, man. You know, it's like, you, you know, you, you have all the time in the world money there, you know? It's like, who cares? You're showering. What's what's the better to do than, than write a song, man? <laughs> Come up with a bit. Absolutely. So are you binge-watching anything these days on Netflix or whatever? Oh, man. 
I, I'll tell you this, man. That's that's all my wife and I do is we just binge watch. We, but you know, we're kind of late to the party on, on a lot of these shows right now. We we kind of we watch like uh, the Hannibal series on there. Obviously, my favorite one of all time was Breaking Bad. But you know, we we started watching that after the whole thing had uh, had finished, right? But uh, what would be the the latest one? I don't know. There's there's so many of them. We, there was Hannibal. There was Dexter. But yeah, you know, the the last thing we actually finished watching was uh, Blue Planet. <laughs> really exciting. <laughs> but you know, we're, we're into into that that kind of stuff too. And the cinematography is incredible, right? So I, I love Netflix and especially the documentary stuff or or the different types of series. There's there's a lot of good stuff. My wife really uh, enjoyed this one called The Handmaid Tale or something like that. Handmaid Tale. I started Italian. watching. Yeah, I started watching that with her, and, and that was really interesting. Same with Castle Rock. That was another one we were watching that's really cool. Yeah, you can get sucked down a hole real fast doing that. So, last question on the way out the door: Is there a singular album that completely changed your life? Oh, man, that's that's a that's a tough question because there's various stages in my life like you know when I heard moving pictures from Rush that changed me as a drummer but I'd say from a musician standpoint and what really kicked my ass to do the style of music that I'm doing now I'd, I'd have to say it's vulgar display of power from Pantera when I heard that man I was just like man I gotta get out and do stuff like this this is absolutely badass kicks the shit out of everything out there right now so you know, it's like I, I heard that album and, and it definitely changed things in a big way for me. And yeah, I, I love that record. I love Pantera. Pantera is my favorite metal band of all time. Excellent. We're heading out here. Obviously, we only have the one track to play so far. What is one of your all time favorite metal songs that we can play on the way out the door? I'm guessing it's probably Pantera, but I could be wrong. You know what? Let's, let's do something different. I, I love Pantera for sure, but that would be the obvious choice, right? So, right. you know, I was just at NAM in January and hung out with my good friends in Meshuga. I love those guys. Nice. And uh, the, the great dudes and uh, you know what? I've always loved that band. That was another uh, band that changed a lot of things for me. And you know what? I love the song Bleed. So if you could play Meshuga by Bleed, that'd be badass. Perfect. Ryan, a monolith, getting ready to head back in the studio to record the rest of the debut album, the single Hollow, out now. Thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us. Hopefully we can catch up again after we've got the full album. We can talk a little more in depth. 100%, man. Thank you uh, for the interview. We, we appreciate this and, and the support that you're giving us. And, you know, the last thing I'd like to say to, to all the people out there who are supporting us, thank you. Thank you very much because... The bottom line is we can't do this without the support of the people around the world. There's no way we'll be able to tour, do all that stuff without the support that we're getting. And the support right now has been absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, you know, we just want to gain as many supporters out there as we can and take this everywhere that we can. So thank you. Uh, thank everyone listening. We really appreciate it.